Hey folks, it's me, and I thought I'd make this quick video to give you an idea of why we're doing what we're doing and what is the, our future goal in our programming classes. So, first of all, of course, you might want wonder, you know, why are we studying assembly and C when, you know, uh, most people are using other languages such as Python and even Java or Ruby or Lisp or um, there's, uh, you know, JavaScript. And to understand that, of course, um, I want to give you an idea, and that is, you know, first of all, uh, think about this. Anybody who's a professional driver or a professional pilot, these people usually, especially the really good ones, are actually engineers and mechanics. These people spend a lot of their time understanding the nuts and bolts of their engine. They are not simply people who know how to drive. These people really, really are experts at how these machines work right down to the nuts and bolts. They can listen to the way that the engine moves and stuff like that, and they, they just understand when things aren't working the way they should. It's that deep understanding that gives you insight. People that only learn the top-level languages will only have an, a superficial understanding. So that's the most important. You want to learn its components, you know, how does it work? What is the logic? And of course, how does it break? Because knowing how things break is really important so that you don't break them. So, of course, you already know this, computer languages themselves, what they really are is, of course, as you know, computers really only understand binary, which is, you know, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Humans, on the other hand, we only understand letters and numbers. And the big problem is, of course, they each have different grammar. And you remember, grammar is just the rules for putting together this stuff. So in order to connect the two, we have different levels of languages. Now, I just tried to make my own little terrible drawing there. But the idea here is that whenever you call a language low or high, what it's telling you is how far removed the language is from the actual binary or machine code. Um, the machine code is just ones and zeros, and it's the lowest level. We could, in theory, write in machine code, but machine code is just insanely um, difficult and tedious to write, which is actually why assembly is usually used to connect to the, to, to, to the logic. Um, of course, assembly itself is kind of challenging, but at least it is a lot more usable than machine code. Above it are the medium level languages such as C and Fortran. And what the higher level, every time you go up in a level, the important point here is that the higher level languages, they save you a lot of the work that the lower level languages do. So in assembly, you're going to notice that we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to take a lot of steps just to add 2 plus 2. You got to move registers here, move registers there. Whereas in C, Fortran, or the other languages, you can just type X plus Y or 1 plus 2, and it'll give you the answer. That may make the higher level languages easier, but one thing that you don't notice, as you're going up in level, you, can, you have to interpret the language further, and that will always make the language itself and the programs that are created with it slower. So the higher up you go, the slower your programs go. This is why your lowest level languages are usually used for things that must run super fast. Things like your, your camera, your video, um, anything that is high speed must run. It's going to be processed in assembly. Things that are okay to run slowly, you can process them in the higher languages, even in scripting languages, which are at the top here. Okay. Now, to understand low level, like I said, it's critically important because just like in other things, if you truly want to understand English, you actually should learn a little bit about Greek, Latin, German, and French because you know, English is actually made up of those languages. Now, same thing, to understand Python, Java, C++, and HTML, and other high level languages, you have to understand where these languages came from. And the languages that make them are assembly and the low-level languages. Now, here's the thing is, like I said, some people will be lazy and be like, well, you know what, I just, I heard somebody so they didn't need to learn it. Well, can you learn it without its roots? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, there are some race car drivers who could maybe don't even know what an engine is, but I'm gonna tell you what, if they ever run into difficulties, they're gonna be out of luck. 
Um, and when things get a little more challenging, they're not going to know what to do. So understanding the low level will give you an insight. It's almost like getting a third eye because you will always have that logic in your brain. People who only understand the upper level language will not, sometimes not understand. Oh, why is this? You guys already seen this when you're like, oh my God, why does this have to happen? Why do you like you all complain? Oh, why do you have semicolons? Why do you have this? Why do you have that? You're going to understand all of that. No one's going to have to tell you. You're going to tell other people why these things work. You're going to understand the logic. And this is important. So we've got four goals, okay? Our goals with numbers. This is the first thing. You're going to learn the lowest number systems, and that's going to be binary and hexadecimal. I'm going to give you links with some videos that should help you. Tomorrow, we're actually going to work on some worksheets. I want to see that you have absorbed that information. Um, you will not be watching the videos tomorrow. I expect you to watch them today. So don't go making excuses and say that you didn't watch them. You will be working on that and I will test you on that. So that's number one. And why are goals with numbers? Well, the lowest number systems are actually what is used far more frequently in all of computing. You will see these numbers all the time, all the time, all the time. You better get, um, you better acquire um, literacy with these numbers and actually the actual word is numeracy but you really need to understand these numbers to be able to actually read code and to really go more advanced into what you want to do so you're gonna you're gonna have that 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 challenge next is our assembly goals and our assembly goals of course is using you know we want you to use assembly to understand some of the simple actions that happen on a computer the closer you get to the machine code, the more you actually understand how the CPU does what it does. And this is so important. You do not understand it right now. I know that. As you do it, you're going to start to run into certain barriers, certain issues. As you conquer them, you will understand, oh, well, that's why this does that. That's why this happens. You're going to especially be happy when you're programming and you don't make anywhere near the errors. And if you make an error, you're going to find the solution a lot faster. When I sent you that article a couple of days ago about how there is the desert of despair where learning, where programmers who are learning to code start crying because they can't figure anything out and everything's so damn hard and there's so much suffering, well, that's because a lot of them do not have this fundamental knowledge. You can get it. It's still going to be hard, but you are going to get through it a lot quicker. That's one of the reasons I think this is really critically important. Of course, um, you know, like I said, once you understand this, all the higher level languages will be so much easier. You will, so you will not write much in assembly or uh, you'll, you're going to write some in C, but you're not going to use assembly that much. But the logic you will take from it will speed up all of your other code. So that's why we want that. Of course, next is going to be our networking goals. And that is, I'm going to show you more about how networking itself works. You're gonna, I'm gonna teach you more about the layered nature. Here's the thing: is I should have written more about that because the very layered nature of things. This isn't just a computer principle. This is a principle of life itself. Those of you who are taking biology classes have already heard, probably in your first few classes, about what we call the organizational principles where things are organized at the molecular, at the at the, at the atomic, the molecular, the cellular, the tissue, the organ, the organism, and the ecosystem. Everything can be organized that way. And in computers, we have something similar. Here's the thing. In computers, it's probably even more important you understand that layering because there are problems that will occur at one layer that do not occur at others. When people say something happens at somewhere, you might be, oh, well, it happens at this layer. Trust me, one of the things that has made me an excellent troubleshooter when things happen, it's understanding how the layers work. So you're going to understand the OSI 7 layer stack. And not only that, but like I just said, it's not just the OSI 7 layer stack. Computers work on layers too. We have layers. That's what we have our lower and upper layer languages. We also have our functions, our kernel, our kernel space, our user space. Everything is layered. So you want to learn that. Of course, how router switches and hubs works. And we're going to use this. It's not just for fanciness. We're going to use all of this so that we can connect our machines and network them. This is critically important. You cannot simply read. I don't simply want you to read code and type it in blindly because you should be able to do this on your own. OK, finally, our database goals. And that's just, you know, you want to understand how the database itself is put together. You've already learned a few basic commands, but, you know, you don't really know much. 
I'm going to show you how to build a couple of small databases with your raspberries, how to plug in your raspberries to your home networks and send that information to those report and remote websites, and then to create real time graphs and data. Now we're not there yet. That's why we need to work harder and get there. Okay. And that is so that we can, because remember, our ultimate goal is to be able to implement this in our real atmospheric research. Okay. So some of you though may complain, you know, nobody really writes assembly programs and up to a point it's true. Most assembly, of course, it's just, it's not used to make programs. Most of it is, if, if they do, they use it to write drivers and drivers are the small programs that allow your computer to interface with all the other things outside the computer. For example, the USB, the monitor, the sensors, the keyboard, uh, everything yeah, requires a driver. You don't see it, but it's there. And to those of us who've been in computers for a long time, we remember these things used to be horrible and they still are. You gotta learn how to use them. Assembly helps you in doing that, okay? Now, also, we're not, we're gonna, whenever we write our C programs, we will occasionally switch between assembly and C. And that's the cool thing about these two programs that they actually let us communicate between the two of them. So when we need very fast code, when we need to write a driver, for example, for our Wi-Fi, for cellular, for temperature, for CO2, for any of these, we will switch down to assembly. When we need anything more complex, for example, when we need timing mechanisms, anything that is graphing, anything that's gonna to connect to the network, we're gonna use C. So we will switch between the two. Now, we may not actually rewrite any drivers because honestly, there's plenty of people who've already written the drivers themselves. What are we gonna do? We're gonna open those drivers in their source code and we're gonna see if we can improve them, wonderful. We may need to integrate them. We may need to time them in a different way. Those are things that you cannot do at other higher codes. We need assembly for those, okay? Now, your job, watch the video links I send you. They are included in this video. Watch them. I will test you tomorrow to make sure you did understand this. Now you may be like, oh my God, you're giving me this at the last minute. At the last, well, this isn't that long. It's only like 20 minutes of, of watching videos and, and just going over a little bit of stuff. So, and, you know, don't complain. It's not that much. Okay. We're going to work on assembly and on numbers, and we're going to begin to move up into networking. Okay. We're going to continue to work on assembly because this is where we're settling for a little while. We're going to work on C and assembly, C and assembly for a little while until you really start to get it, until it starts to become second nature. Once we've done that, we're going to start to move up into higher levels back again. We're going to take you all the way up to Python, Java, C, C++, uh, JavaScript, all kinds of scripting and macros languages. But you got to do your job. So go do it. Okay. Okay, folks. Thanks and take care.